Welcome to Make Pods Great Again. I'm your host, John Woolley, here with my bestie, Nikki, still in quarantine. Nikki, how are you? Hey, I'm good. How are you? I think it's been a whole 24 hour, twenty four hours since we saw each other. I know. Maybe. We had a night off and it was sad. I know. I didn't know what to do with myself. Not at all. I, I had Zoom calls with other people <laughs> to fill the void. You cheated, you cheated on me? I did. What the heck? What the heck? Well, tonight we're joined by Noah Olson. Noah, how are you? I am very well. I'm glad to be joining you guys, although I do feel a little bit um, like an outsider. You guys have such a strong bond. I hope that I can weasel my way into this, make it a trifecta. We have an awkward bond. I'm not sure it's strong. It's awkward. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Maybe I don't want in on this. I don't know. We'll see <laughs> yeah. by the end of it. No, no, you're right, though. The awkwardness is unbreakable. True. <laughs> well, I'm excited to be here. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, no, thanks for coming on. We've been, uh, you know, capitalizing on the fact that everyone's home and it's just been cool to like catch up with people and see what's been going on uh, with life, with, I know we're all quarantined, with, you know, whatever you got going on. So like, yeah. are you holding up? For sure. I'm doing okay. I have already warned you guys, but I'll uh, reemphasize because I still feel it brewing. There's a possibility that I throw up while we're doing this podcast. I literally five six minutes ago just finished doing some pretty hard intervals um bike row and run and i mixed up a little carb shake grabbed a popsicle and planted myself out back so i'm still recovering but i'm doing well i only mention that because that's what i've been up to i kind of quickly pivoted and got myself set up with a home gym and i've been just training my booty off because i got nothing else to do that sounds like a terrible workout <laughs> I kind of hope he throws awesome. up, though. I know. It would be a podcast gross. first. I know. Okay. I'll, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so no you've just been, uh, been kind of like home in Florida and training and, and kind of getting ready for when we're back into the season? Yeah. Yeah. It's been – my friend and I were actually just talking about it. We're in week seven of quarantine, I think, for most people in the United States, which is crazy. Like, that's such a long time to have been – home and really nowhere else I mean we've had little trips out here and there but for the most part just here at home doing our thing um, I feel pretty adjusted to it at the moment I think as I've been thinking about it and saying it more I think it's probably a, a good quality that I have where I will kind of adapt myself to whatever situation I'm in and being at home and, and training I've decided to try to make the most of it and really enjoy it and when we go back to being in the gym I'm gonna make the most of that and enjoy that as well so um, I feel okay I feel like I've adjusted to the home life for now but I am eager to be able to see some friendly familiar faces do a little bit of travel get to compete in person once this is all over well, I love what you and Chandler have been doing uh, on Instagram Chandler's a good friend of ours we love Chandler and yeah, so I love been... that kid been been following watching you guys trying to outlift each other it's been a lot of fun <laughs> yeah well we uh we both kind of had the conversation where we didn't know what our competitions competition schedule was going to look like and rather than kind of sit around waiting and then having to scramble and get ready for whatever they announced we decided that we were just going to keep training and stay ready and whenever something comes up, we'll be able to jump right into it and feel fully prepared. So he and I have been training pretty hard in our own home setups. We've been going live with each other every Monday to do workouts with the community, all body weight stuff. And then Wednesdays and Fridays, I'm doing the same thing, kind of either solo or with another friend. But like Nikki said, I think we have more time at home and there are some more captive audiences. So it's been nice to I don't want to say take advantage. I think that's the wrong phrase, but to be able to capitalize and step in and fill the gap where there are people that maybe need a little bit of guidance and ideas for what to do working out at home and want some interaction and competition. And so being able to go live and do workouts with everyone has hopefully filled a lot of those gaps for people and for myself. So I think I have that's a so cool. So like anyone can, can tune in and work out with you guys? Yeah, yeah, that's how we had it set up. I mean, we're just doing IG live and, and I'll link up with whoever I'm doing it with that day. So it's it's kind of a one-way street where everybody that's watching sees us, but I can't see them. I can just see comments and stuff. So I will go live, go over whatever the workout is for that day. Again, it's all body weight stuff and there are scale downs so that anybody can do it. 
and then we'll go through a warm up and jump into the workout. I'll do it on camera with everybody, assuming that they're doing it at home as well. It's usually either an AMRAP or a time cap thing. We'll finish at the same time, cool down, chit chat, do a little core piece and sign out. And hopefully it's a good hour of people's day, get them off the couch and sweating a little bit before they have to get into whatever Zoom call they have that day. I like that you're like, hopefully they're doing it on the other side and they're not just- Yeah, I mean, I never know, like I said, (laughs) yeah, it's a one-way street. They could just be watching in bed doing who knows what i just awkwardly <laughs> watching so i have a great workout you can do with chandler if you just want to crush him in a wad just absolutely Uh-oh. destroy him that's hard to do these days no yeah. this, this would be easy straight up calf raises just do calf raises okay. are you making fun of his legs <laughs> <laughs> they, they make fun of themselves really i don't need to do a lot of work there it's tiny little calf yeah i'd be careful He's a, he's a strong fella. <laughs> I don't know. We had we had some pretty solid trash talk, the three of us, the last time that he was oh, on yeah. the podcast. Yeah. He, he okay. may have been the finest trash talk we've had on the podcast. We need to have him back on because it was so good. I want a second go. Yeah. At he's really – he's good at, like, improv, um, whether it's smack talk or just being funny. He can – turn it on a lot he's like a character he's a good actor yeah so i think i just didn't think that i don't think he was prepared for it coming from me i think he i caught him by surprise and he made the mistake of like telling us some stories of how he was like awkward at dating when he was like a teenager and i was like yeah i'm gonna bank that for later (laughs) did you get him back (laughs) oh totally (laughs) oh yeah poor guy a good episode if you haven't heard that one go back and yeah no, i have to check it out he <laughs> forwarded it to me when it came out but i haven't had a chance to listen but he's a good kid i like chandler a lot i'm excited to see what he's able to do in this sport i feel like when i kind of graduate if you will from being a, a top level individual competitor i think it'll be really cool to I, I don't know what my role will be i don't think i'll be like a mentor or a coach to him or anything but i want to be like his guy. I want to be in his corner. I want to see him do really well. He's one of my better friends. So it'll be cool to see him do his thing. Oh, what a neat like way of thinking about it. Like when you say graduate, you mean kind of like put competitive individual CrossFit behind you or? Yeah. I just mean fizzle out, you know, yeah. like can't do it I, for I forever. That, right. I don't know that I'm going to make the decision and say, all right, I'm done with this. I've, I've almost been there before just because of nerves and pressure, but I think I'll keep doing it until the leaderboard says otherwise. You know, if I start, if I have two years in a row where I'm like 20th, 30th place, hopefully that's a few years down the road, then I'll I'll start to reconsider things. But if I can still be gunning for the podium, then you'll be out there calling the shots for me, Ms. Brazier. I hope so. I mean, you definitely set some precedent the last season. So I feel like your uh, graduating days are long in the future still I hope so it's ironic because this year I was actually considering like I just had a rough season and I was thinking man do I still do I got it you know like can Mm -hmm. I still hang with the big dogs and uh and I think that if I had performed poorly at the games this year I would have had a really tough time jumping back into training for this 2020 season so thankfully, I, I did relatively well, and I think that really made it an easy transition back into training and got me kind of fired up for this year. We yeah, are relatively well, I would say. Yeah. Relatively, yeah. <laughs> did okay. Did all right. Actually, I thought you guys per- were both at the games last year. How was yeah. your spectator experience? I thought your performance was the highlight of the games. I mean, not I because you finished second, but that. but um, like just from a personal aspect, like I, you know, I get a, a, just a boatload of DMs and, and people were blowing me up when you were wearing the leader's jersey, just blowing nice. me up. And I love it. And that's you a little festive. You had a couple of good memes while that was going on. <laughs> were you the one? I think there was like a, a little a puppy dog laying on the ground and there were a bunch of people photographing him. I don't know if that was you. I don't there know. Another I, one. I do yeah, so many. It's, it's, hard, it's hard to remember, but uh, can't keep yeah. up. But I just like, you know, looking back on it, it you know, I, it, it was an interesting moment. You know, you have so many people that are kind of in Matt's corner because they kind of like, you know, they, they're always in the kind of like the, the backing of the champ, you know, the three-time yeah, champ, four-time easy. champ or whatever. Being and a then LeBron you, fan. Yeah. And then, and then you're coming up wearing the leader's jersey. And so I'm getting messages from people worried that Matt's going to lose and messages uh-huh. from people cheering you on. And what was really interesting to me about it is that there was really no hate on 
on either side. Everybody was like, man, you know, we kind of want to see Matt win, but we're really excited about yeah. watching Noah come up and, and make this a really exciting competition. And that, for me, that was like what was most fun. It was like, this wasn't a year where nice. you go into the final day and going, all right, it's just a four tone conclusion. You know? yeah. 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 You know, that's cool. And, uh, I think that, I think that I lost my train of thought. What was I just <laughs> going to say? We were just talking about how awesome you were last season. At the yeah, games. pretty much. Oh, oh yeah, no, right, no, no. right. <laughs> I, I think I, I remember what I was going to say. I think that because anybody was challenging Matt, like you said, it was an exciting final and you didn't really, it wasn't guaranteed who was going to win. I think that was what people wanted this year, whether it was me or anybody else. I think they just wanted to see somebody gunning for the, the title and making it kind of like a fun and exciting finish. Um, I'm sure some people more than others were excited that it was me. Some people probably didn't like that it was me, but all in all, it was cool to make it exciting for everyone, including myself. Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong, but at the same time, like, I wouldn't sell yourself short there by any means because you have clearly put in so much work, uh, you know, on the competition floor and also, like, between your ears. Like, you have clearly put in so much effort to become a tougher competitor more you know more headspace more in the game all, all yeah. of the above and that is something that every single athlete struggles with so i wouldn't sell yourself short there in the cool. in the putting yourself in that second place position where you deserved to be for sure yeah thank you i appreciate that it's cool actually to hear that from you because this is actually a terrible analogy probably uh -oh. but joanne and i were watching um and what is it? it it's a, a spinoff of the bachelor and i think it's called something voice it's where like singers go and get coupled up and they're getting judged based on their relationship and how well they sing anyway if anybody out there watches the bachelor there's this guy chris harrison who's the host and he's there like every episode he comes in and updates them and says, hey, well, it looked like last night this happened, and so today is going to be this. And I said to her, I wonder how, while the show is being filmed, this guy, Chris, being the, the announcer, MC host, kind of, how is he kept in the loop enough? Because it's not like he's watching the episode after it's produced and he gets like the shortened version of it. I was wondering how he's able to keep up with the stories in order to talk about it on each episode and that kind of makes me think of you long story <laughs> short you're kind of there at the event watching it go down and you have to you actually do have to pay attention and focus and be able to talk about what just went down with us right after it happens um yeah i'm still wad drunk that was a weird analogy no but i get what you're you saying are, you are crossfit's bachelor host boom it's the coolest thing boom. anyone's ever said to me <laughs> i love it it's christina harrison my alter ego all of a sudden can we meme that please i think so i think we <laughs> can yes. no you're totally you know right a guy it's a yeah i know i know a guy but you're right it's um it's a delicate balance between like you got to follow like the whole storyline of like everything that's happening but then also get like really granular it's honestly it's become much easier over the years because now i actually yeah. know you guys like when Familiar it was with everybody yeah so. and so like i can I have my own patterns that I've developed, not only doing interviews on the field, but also like knowing you and going out for dinner and hanging out and like, you know, just finding out what you yeah. are like on a different, more personal level because your personalities, all of you athletes play into it so much. And, yeah, and John cool. and I have been talking all year about this since we were in Baltimore about how much I am constantly surprised that you, the elite athletes, second guess yourselves and you get in your own heads and you wonder if you're good enough and it's the yeah. same bullshit that we think like we like average mediocre barely can crossfit people <laughs> think when we walk into the gym to do like an open wad and there's muscle ups and you've never done one and you're like damn it i'm not even good at this I'm yeah here like and it's insane <clears throat> to us that you guys think the same way because you are i don't know you know the best of the best yeah and i don't know how much it's openly discussed either because I think majority of the guys kind of play it cool and like have to maintain a certain persona where like you're a tough guy and I don't know I, I don't think that there's too much 
openness and vulnerability in that sense where many of the top level guys talk about how they're super nervous. And that's why I don't even know sometimes, like I know how I feel and I assume that I'm the only one. Like when we're in the warm up area, I'm in my head like, oh my God, I've got these butterflies that are turning into dragons in my stomach. And that guy over there looks like he's crushing the handstand pushups. He's probably not even nervous. And then he's probably, I don't know, it's not confirmed, but he's probably thinking the exact same thing mm -hmm. about everybody else. So I don't know, I, maybe as, as we all, like you said, kind of get familiar with each other in the sport as athletes and communicating with the public, we'll see a little bit more vulnerability and people will talk about it. But I know I get nervous as heck. I doubt myself all the time. Um, yeah, everyone does. And, and I think, yeah. like, I think over the years, being able to get to know you guys better has allowed me to like, I don't ever want to blow up anybody's spot. You know what I mean? But it's allowed yeah. me to be like, I can lead into questions a little bit more easily. Like, hey, knowing that you were nervous the last time we talked, like, how did you change it for this time? Or like, knowing that yeah. you've been working on your mental game, like what is going on in this season that's different from before? So that yeah. that has been, that's been given me not only like a granular level insight into how people act and feel and whatever but also sort of that bird's eye view it's only happened one time that i completely completely missed an event and still had to do an interview right oh, wow. afterwards i don't really know what just happened but what are you oh talking my about? god it was the scariest yeah. shit that's ever happened it was at games this past year and like we weren't supposed to do an interview and i was nowhere near near the field of play like i yeah side for a second because it was yeah, the run oh, over oh my god it was awful yeah, it was bad. What, I was like, eh, I don't know. Like, how did you feel? I don't know. What just happened? You know? <laughs> just as general as possible. Exactly. <laughs> what sports were you guys both involved in before CrossFit? Or is CrossFit kind of like the first time that you guys have stepped into the professional world of sport? I didn't do squat. I, I was a musician in high school oh, and cool. college and, and had no intention of at all of doing sports and when I had kids decided that I, you know, I didn't want to spend the rest of my life chasing two kids around and have them be in better shape than me. And a buddy nice. of mine had, had bought and opened a CrossFit gym here in Cleveland. And, um, and he told me I was doing P90X at the time. I was just getting Ooh, into fitness. Tony Horton. I know it was Love the real P90X. deal. I Dude, thought I was that all hard. The time. That is Dude, really hard. I, I thought I was the pinnacle of fitness. Swear to God. Sure. Like I'd you done. I'd done 60 days. Well, I, at some point I'm going to post I, for my 50th birthday, which is in August, I'm going to post the before and after photos of me after p and x and me now. Cause it's like, is there um, a significant difference? In, oh my God. It's so aesthetic. It's so different. Um, I mean, oh. I was, I was skinny and you know, I'd lost a lot of weight, but I yeah. certainly wasn't fit. I could just do a ton of pushups, you know? Skinny yeah. Fat. Yeah. And skinny fat is yeah, a thing. I was skinny fat and then, uh, you know, got into CrossFit and it, it changed my life physically, mentally, awesome. emotionally, like, you know, there's so many different things it did. And, you know, I still don't, I still don't play active sports, I guess, but you know, CrossFit kind of is right. Kind, kind of. of. Yeah. Yeah. Come here. yeah, totally. Yeah. I was, um, so I was a dancer my whole life. So I danced with the Boston ballet for 11 years. Oh, cool. When I was a kid. Yeah. And then I was like, I danced all through college and ran my, uh, ran my college dance company and taught little kids and forever, forever. Just the last couple of years, I've sort of fallen off the wagon, but I'm determined after quarantine to like hit some dance classes again, because that was, um, that's, I think what I was really put on this earth to do is dance. Nice. For sure. Dance was it always ballet cocktails. or different styles? Oh my gosh. No. When I quit the ballet, when I was, um, like when I hit puberty, basically, because you can't really dance ballet and have tits. You just can't. Um, <laughs> we actually just watched <laughs> Center Stage. Joanne <gasps> made me watch it recently. And, the uh, original? Yeah. I was noticing yes. there are not a whole lot of boobies on ballerinas. Notice that, huh? <laughs> yeah, I did. Accidentally. Um, one of the best movies of all time, 100%. It was yeah, no, no. pretty good. I did everything. I was, I was actually on a traveling hip hop team. Like, oh, have you ever cool. seen Joanne like America's Best well. Dance Crew? Was on hip hop. Yeah, yeah, super yeah. cool. Yeah, so, so like, a, when, like a team like that. I'm sorry to interject just to add to it. <laughs> when Joanne and I started dating, we both went to the University of Miami and she was on Chaos is what it was called. It was UM's hip hop dance team. Yes. And they would do a showcase every semester. And that was like one of my favorite events to attend. I cannot dance, but I have a 
huge appreciation for it. I love watching people dance well. And so I would always go to the showcases and was so envious of the way those guys could move. And yeah, it's cool. So I'm oh, yeah. relatively more familiar with dance than I was before I met Joanne because of as all the dancing that she's done. Her and I need to get together at like a like an event after party or something. I'm just yeah, that'd be a lot of fun. Break it down. Oh yeah, I have no, I have been known to break it down at the after party. I believe I don't you. You guys should link up with Chandler. I got it. I got that. <laughs> nice. Um, and then I was a party dancer. Yeah, hundred percent. And, and then I I played college volleyball for a little bit. You know, when I think that of hip, very cool. When I think of hip hop, I think of you, Nikki. Always. I know. It's oh, like I white see. Jewish girl from Boston. Yes. Yeah. Classic. Hi. Hey, listen, I I can get I can get real down, okay? I'm sure I you believe can. trust. I do. I believe you. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you can. I promise. I swear. Um what else? You just said something that reminded me of something. I don't know. So no anyway. I have a, I have a question for where, you. Where so, do we go from here, John? Well, so uh, one thing that's interesting for me about you, like I, I got a lot of questions about you when I was at Wadapalooza. There are a lot of people that saw you there. And like, I, I guess I'm curious about how you stay so authentic. Like I, what's interesting is like, I don't know you very well, but I know a lot of people that know you and they all rave about how nice and, and kind nice. you are. Yeah, but I appreciate a, a lot of the like casual fans, they see that in you. And it, they almost feel, or at least the comments I get from people, they go, is this real? That's the thing they yeah. keep asking me. Like, can, <laughs> can someone possibly be this nice? Like, that's what they want to know. And from every, by all accounts, you really are. So the, that's the question is, like, how do you stay so authentic and, like, you know, kind of maintain the intensity and the training? And you get people, like, constantly pulling at you. Like, just it's like an yeah. endless stream. It's because he loves to fuck with people. That's yeah. it. Right? There you go. Yeah, no, I'm, it's, kidding. It's all I'm kidding. I'm show. kidding. <laughs> I'm joking. No, I think, I think what it is is that I, I really want to, and in order for it to be sustainable for me, I have to be enjoying myself, and I enjoy myself when I'm having positive interactions with people, and so when I'm at an event, and there are fans and people want to take photos and hang out and chit chat, number one, that's that's really cool because that's never happened to me before right? until I became a, a CrossFit athlete or CrossFit Games athlete. So it's still relatively new to me and, and pretty awesome. Number two, I know it's not going to last forever. We were already just talking earlier about how eventually there's an ending to my individual career as a CrossFit athlete. And so I would love to be able to just enjoy it while it lasts. You know, I think in, I don't know, let's play it safe and say 10 years, I might go to a CrossFit event as a spectator and be walking around through the crowd and not one person may recognize me and want to say hi and take a photo. And so while they do still want to, I want to take advantage of it and, and enjoy it. And if just being nice and giving them the time of day is going to make them happy and make them excited for the rest of their day, I think that's really cool that I have the power to do that again right now because I'm not going to have that power forever. And um, I, I don't know. I would love to just be able to use whatever influence I have to spread positivity. That's relatively new to me. I mean, I would say in the last like four or five years, I've just become more confident in myself and, and what I want to do on this earth. And it's been affirmed and reaffirmed in me. Hey, like people have told me that they enjoy my positivity and my outlook and my uh, the joy that I kind of carry. And, and so that obviously reinforces it. And I'm like, oh, if people like this, well, I'm going to keep doing it and try to just be it more. And, and it has become natural and easy. And I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah, totally. I'm just being me. And if it makes other people happy, then that makes me happy. Well, people will remember in 10 years, you know, the photos that they took with you. I love taking photos with people because I know 10 <laughs> years from now, they're going to be like, who is this old bald guy? guy? <laughs> like, what? <That's> awesome. <laughs> who, who is this guy I took a photo with? I, I don't think I, you and I have gotten a photo at all yet. Have we ever? No, you know what? You were taking photos at Wadapalooza and uh, you're in front of that little mini bus, actually. Oh, and yeah. there's a big line of people and like, I'm kind of weird about that because like, I, I yeah, know so many athletes, I like it. I, I don't want to like wait in line. Not that I feel like I'm better than anybody else to wait in line. I just like, you I feel special. like I'm taking, 
I feel like I'm taking, I feel like I'm taking somebody else's spot when I know I'll run into you at some point. You know what I mean? It's like, I get it. It's the whole thing's like just kind of weird and awkward. I did get a photo in front of your bus though with Luke P though. That was fun. I did see that bachelor nation. There you go. We're talking about it. Oh yeah. Luke Luke and I go way back. My daughter hates him. As my daughter. No, this is, this is, this is a true story. My, my youngest daughter, Megan, uh, come, comes home one day. And she's just ranting and raving about Luke P. And I'm like, who is Luke P? She's like, this. I was going to say you didn't know him yet, did you? Yeah, I had no idea because I don't watch The Bachelor. So she's telling me about how, you know, he's the villain on that season's Bachelor. And she's like, oh, you'd probably like him, Daddy. He's a crossfitter. <clears throat> so because I was trying to flex and, and show Megan what a big deal I was, I followed him. <laughs> yeah. And I and, uh, started watching him. Well, then like the next day, she sends me one of his posts. And all, he was doing some CrossFit workout and she sends me a message and says, tell your homie Greg to kick him out of CrossFit because she knew I knew Glassman. So, okay. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to teach my 16 year old a lesson. So I send him a DM and say, Hey Luke, you want to come on the podcast? And he immediately responds and says, yes, I thought yeah, she was going- all about that stuff. Yeah. And he's so, he's such a nice dude. And I thought she was going to lose her mind. And even, and even then I took those photos of Miami. I mean, I love the guy and he's a friend, but I took the photos and then sent them to her because I knew she'd be mad at me. Is she and, still not a fan? She oh, she still hates him. I mean, the dude, those come around yet. She never will. The people that watch that show, <laughs> like once you've ingrained in someone as a villain, you're always a villain. It doesn't matter. Like, yeah, you know, I, I came I home bad for him in that sense because like you said, he is a nice kid. And I think a lot of the stuff on the show got a little bit twisted. And oh, of course, in some people's mind, that's how he's going to be forever. Even if they meet him and they walk away and they're like, huh, he's not so bad. But now nah, on the show, he sucks. So he just sucks. Yeah. Well, well and, you know, don't realize that like television productions are productions. <laughs> look, she, she's right. a 16 year old girl. What do you expect? Like, you know, True. she's. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure if she met him, she'd be flushing blushing and all nervous <laughs> no, I like that that's that, how i got when i met she, him she'd still hate him <laughs> she'd still hate him i like yeah. that that entire story was really just john flexing on his daughter it was it, uh, I, I, I do that all the time though all Does she the time think you're cool yet uh yeah actually they told me that they both I have two daughters and they came home uh, a week or so ago and they're like hey daddy you're the second most <laughs> popular dad in the beachwood school system <laughs> and i'm like nice. how, I'm based like, on what instagram followers yeah i'm like second how the hell am I second? They're like, yeah, well, who's Mach- beating you? Machine Gun Kelly. He has a kid that goes ah, to their school. And I'm like, all right, well, he's MGK. actually famous. Yeah, he's yeah. actually famous. So if I'm second to him, I mean, that's like, all right. You're winning. That. Yeah. Oh, boy. I'm doing pretty good. Actually famous versus CrossFit famous. There's definitely a difference. Yes, there's yeah. absolutely a difference. Absolutely. What would you say if, if there are like the A-list, B-list, C-list celebrities, where is like, where do the, the top crossfit celebrities rank in that worldwide celebrity realm oh, who's the most famous meteorologist i'm kidding oh, um, no, no. Come on. It, it would depend on who the crossfitter is like because there yeah. are also yeah. levels of crossfitters there's like matt and tia and then you can start layering in now you can put you like right there now that you, Come on. you, know, you know i you don't can. think well, I don't honestly, I don't <laughs> think like famous i'm like air quotes famous i don't think famous crossfitters um rank by how good of an athlete they are because you think about like Matt, Matt might be an exception but like think about other crossfitters that just have like huge sponsors right. or yeah. big partners they're known outside of the cross like the Danica Patricks do you know what I mean like yep. they're known outside of the crossfit world for other things too so are they famous crossfitters well you could yeah. say there's Josh Bridges who does a lot of YouTube stuff now team Richie that you know they're not you know he's not a competitor I don't think but those are, no but they're still within our community i'm talking about like yeah other if sports. you step outside of CrossFit, oh, okay I got yeah it. yeah how many people know i don't know it's it is such a niche thing like my manager and good friend is is the manager to some guys in other professional sports like the nba and the nfl and mm-hmm. there are some of those guys that are definitely aware of what we do I got to meet, and this is not me flexing. It sounds like I'm name dropping, but I met Tim Tebow recently, and he was super into like, man, CrossFit's so crazy. I've seen that. How do you guys train? What do you eat? And so I think in a general sense, a lot of other professional athletes are aware of what we do in the training realm, but I, I they probably don't like follow the sport enough to know anybody's names. They'll maybe be like, 
who's that guy that's won it a few times? Right, right, oh, right. Oh, yeah, I've heard of Rich Froning. Like, right, exactly. I don't know. I, within yeah. our sport, there's definitely the tiers. But outside of CrossFitters, it's uh, not many people probably know who the top CrossFitters are. Right, that's okay. what I think. Or they'll fine. be like, that guy, Matt, because they saw him like – like a picture of him in the Nike store or something like right. that. Like, do you know what I mean? Right. Because the, they have these partnerships or did I see something recently about how Sarah Sigmund's daughter is partnering with a car brand? Volkswagen. Yeah, it was yes. Volkswagen, right? Yes. Like people are going to yeah. know who she is because that in and of itself has so much more exposure than just our documentaries, our live broadcasts, like my interviews. <laughs> right. It's just going to get to a, a larger population of people. Which yeah, is cool. that'd be cool. Yeah. The more it grows, the better it is. For well, all see, I, I have a few Absolutely. of those. I have a few of those people that follow me that are like really famous, and Nikki keeps bugging me to to beg oh, them to come on. My like, God, so Dan, we Dan, Well, Danica follows me, so I and I actually know Danica. I talked to Danica a few times, um, and then now I just got uh, what's the guy's name? Nikki Joe Mangliato. Is that his last name? He he was in the movie Spider Man. He was in Batman v Superman. He's been. In he a lot of stuff. was in. Um, uh, Magic Mike, come he on! A, he was in Magic Mike, which I've never seen. Oh. I to throw that out there. Um, uh, I feel like maybe I know. It's who you're Joe Manganiello. About. Yeah, there you go. Is he? Who's he married to? Um, uh, Sophia Vergara. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I know who that he guy is. follows John, cool. and every day I'm like, "Did you message him? Can we get him on the podcast? Did you <laughs> message him yet? Big did you dude. He's like he is big. Six something, <laughs> probably two hundred and something pounds. He's like two CrossFitters. I saw yeah, him at, he was at Gaines like way back when, when we were. Oh, was uh, he? That's yeah, cool. I think so. Yeah, he definitely was. It was our last year at Madison and I saw him. He was like, had VIP seating at the soccer stadium at one point. And I nice. was like, oh, that's so cool. He's here. Man. Yeah, it's, that's kind of funny too. I think every now and then there are random celebrities who happen to just either like, like or do CrossFit that'll mm -hmm. show up at the events. And we have no idea. Like, Oh, who was it? A few years ago, there was word had gotten around that there was some like mega celebrity that was there. Um, dang, I can't remember who it was, but it was like so hush hush because they don't want to make a big deal out of it. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of cool to know, like, hey, maybe this person. I don't know why we care as people, but hey, this this guy knows maybe who I am, has seen me perform. And yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's cool. It was cool, like. Um we would always have like Seth Rollins has come a whole bunch of times yeah. and like, you know, he's famous in his own world. I mean, those people are fanatics about their celebrities sure. just like we are. So it's all, you're right. It is always cool to see them show up and being like, Oh, like, look, we have, we have interest the in crossover. other areas. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. John, will you please and <laughs> Joe? No, not yet. Do no. it. Come on. No, he's I, home. I'll do it for you. I'd have a better shot at Danica That's than true. him. For sure. But I just want to I see him on my a, Zoom screen. Yeah, I'm sure Is you he, do. He's a dreamboat, huh? He's just it's so cool. Man. Like he, he's one of those. <laughs> I'm not a huge like celebrities person, but like him and his wife, Sophia Vergara, like they just seem so like I want to like get a beer with them. You yeah, know? Yeah. Fun to hang out with. Totally. Sure. I'll send him that DM, Nikki. Nikki wants to have a beer with you and your wife and see what he says. I, like I would that. actually. That's a good in. I'm sure. Don't tell him that. He probably, he probably wouldn't enjoy that. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> don't, don't, please don't. <laughs> yeah. Then that, that would be your first and only beer with them. I, I will say it was a pretty good name drop to say Tim Tebow, though. I love that dude. That is cool. Yeah, man. he's a cool guy. He's really nice. We, got, we met through a little church event up in Georgia. Uh, when was it? On New Year's. He's another one that has driven me, it's driven me crazy over the years where people kind of beat him up for being so nice. I'm like, this guy does nothing but donate time to charity. Like that's what, he, that's his life. He just gives time to yeah. sick kids. And, you know, he's for helping sure. kids with cancer and people are beating him up for it. I'm like, what is wrong with the world? Like, this is and a I, great I, guy. I think it is genuine too. Cause I got to meet him in like, in a private area. Nobody was watching. It wasn't like he had to put on a front in any way and he was just super nice welcoming down to earth like like i said he dove into asking me a bunch of questions about crossfit and um yeah i i guess i think he's he's very religious and very faithful and he's a really good representative for that community but i think that might be what's just like overbearing to people um i don't know I, my experience with him has been pretty good and he seems See, I, like a good dude 
I said for years, I, he's probably a little tall, but I said for years, I wish he would CrossFit. Like, if, yeah. you know, instead of doing minor league baseball. He trains or, hard. Yeah, mm -hmm. dude is fit as hell. He always has been. And, uh, sure. and you know, like, you want, you know, when you watch him in college, like he, he could just do it all. So like in my mind, he's one of those people that could come in and could probably multitask and get really good at it. But yeah, I wonder who else would be able to transition from a professional sport into CrossFit and do well. I, there's actually uh do you guys watch UFC MMA at all? Oh yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. A little bit. Um, Jorge Masvidal, the guy from, he's, he's from down in Miami. He like, Right before this whole quarantine situation, he had a couple of really big fights. He had like a flying knee that knocked somebody out in five seconds. And then he fought someone else. And anyway, he kind of like rocketed to uh, MMA celebrity. And he trains next door to Peak 360. And so we've run into each other a handful of times. And this is kind of like a two for one story. Number one, it was cool that there was a crossover where after the games I bumped into him and it was right after he had had his big fight. And we were kind of both like leaving the gym, walking to our cars in different directions and gave each other the head nod. And he said, Hey man, good job at the games. And I was like, I didn't even know that he knew that I competed in the CrossFit games or what they were. And so that was cool. And I was like, man, props to you. Great job on that last fight. And so that was a really cool, like mutual recognition thing. And he also said the next time I saw him, he's like, I actually love CrossFit. And when I'm done fighting, I want you to teach me how to do CrossFit. I want to do muscle ups and, and all that. Like, stuff. Yes, so, of course. Yeah, there, awesome. there could be some athletes out there that, I mean, it's kind of a universal language, right? Like no matter what sport you play, you kind of have to train for your sport and CrossFit is essentially training. So I could see a lot of athletes being interested in it because they do it as well every day. Oh my God. Totally. Especially athletes that like, like live in the pain cave. Like when you think of like fighters and MMA and yeah. like the people who can really push through deep <laughs> levels of physical, but also like mental pain and barriers. I mean, those, those are, those are our people. They totally yeah, get good it. good for CrossFit. A hundred percent. I think yeah, hockey players would do well. Yeah, you see that. You're gonna need people that train really hard. They they have to, you know, no <clears throat> all jokes aside, they gotta fit the body type. Like, you know, these like heavyweight yeah. MMA guys would never be able to do it. They're all like six three, six four, or they too weigh two eighty, like they're just way too big to do it. You're gonna need like, you know, kind of middleweight fighters and they gotta be within that, you know, height range of five six to five ten, five eleven. Yeah. Maybe they do. Like you know, I mean Yeah, yeah, I agree. Well, yeah, know. to be competitive, but yeah. like just to like fit fit in well with a community Look, and like be a good local you're, athlete. you're never going to get a competitive athlete nikki like a really competitive athlete that is going to go yeah i want to do this full time but i don't want to go compete at the, like they're they all want if they're going to compete they want to compete like <laughs> they do like you know you just yeah. you can't you can't yeah. break that fire and somebody that does it like i you know i every oh my god every, you can't give pat vellner a puzzle to do we found out yeah, we were with Vellner two nights Why, ago. And with puzzles. He's yes. crushing puzzles right now. Crushing them. <laughs> it's unhealthy. Nice. I hope he keeps that up. It's... I mean, if he, if he's only doing puzzles, next time we go head to head, <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good about that. Keep puzzling it up. <laughs> uh, until Dave whips out puzzles in Aroma, then uh -oh. you're screwed. Then you're totally Shoot. screwed. You run up the Dave, hill. Get out of puzzle. You do the puzzle. You run back down the hill. I think that's that event actually, one. Actually, no kidding. Jacob Hepner and I went live <laughs> recently and he was reminiscing on a garage games event years ago. Oh my God. Had something. It was like, games? it was literally like hill sprint, uh, three trivia questions and then sprint back down or something like that. And that was <laughs> one of the events. So Dude, my, um, the owner of my gym puts on an event every year <laughs> called the backyard games. And it's like oh, half cool. CrossFit, half lawn games. And it's That's always fun. like we always incorporate drinking games, but Wait, there's are you still no at Ocean State. No, I'm at uh, CrossFit Windrose, still in Rhode Island here. Oh, okay, yeah, cool, cool. but um, so our our owner Dave has been doing this every every year, and it's like it's always got like flip cup or like um, beer pong in it or something. I mean, this yeah. we don't drink; we just fill the cups with water. But so like it doesn't really matter how good at CrossFit you are because the event could be like. 21 15 9 whatever like pretend it's like fran but you yeah. have to hit like a beer pong cup first before so if you're you super go. fit but you suck at that then completely it like evens yeah. the playing field a hundred percent it is huh. so much fun 
I don't see that ever happening at the games, but I no, would be incredibly opposed. Well, I mean, actually, nowadays, there are no rules. So Yeah, that's true. True that. Very true. True, yeah. true that. It's just what be- are you guys being told about um, your access to the games? Anything yet? Just Dave's family barbecue. That's what we're considering it this year. We're just yeah. going to the- make t-shirts. Yes. Hoping for the invite. Hoping, Hope. yeah. Yeah. Hoping. I'm just curious, like, we're all speculating on what, what it could be and what it should be. And, you know, is it going to be on the ranch? And how many, how many athletes and how do you decide between who's already qualified and who is still going to yeah to sanctionals and all that stuff. But I think it, none of it matters until we hear about what California as a state is allowing like regulation wise, because yeah. they're still yeah. really uh, conservative out there right now. <laughs> so, you know, if, even if let's just say like, you know, some, some restrictions are lifted and all of a sudden we're allowed to open up gyms again or whatever it may be, like there still might be a cap on people. There might be like, Hey, you can do whatever, but you can't have more than 50 people at a time or a hundred people at a time. And, and then it starts to get really tricky in terms of, even if it's a skeleton crew, you still need medical people. Yeah. You still need three or four camera guys. You still need. Plus all the athletes like that takes up already. Yeah. yeah. That would be interesting. I was do you listening do it in today. waves? Do you do it on different days? Like, I don't know. Right. Yeah. There was a video that was put out today regarding the quarantine situation in Miami. And they're working on kind of like a two week step plan where every two weeks they'll reassess. And if numbers of cases are trending down and there were a couple other factors, then they'll kind of go into the next phase. Mm-hmm. And the way that it sounded, if I interpreted the video correctly here in Miami, it's still, so we haven't even gotten to phase one yet. <clears throat> Once phase one is put into place, the gyms being able to reopen is not until phase three. And so that's two, four, six weeks after the process begins, that's assuming that everything continues to trend downward. And then they still said that in phase three, businesses that are able to reopen are supposed to keep at 50% of whatever their max capacity is. Mm. Even if it's more than this, there can't be any more than 100 people at a time. So yeah, I I think you're absolutely right that there are so many factors that are going to play into whether or not it can happen and even if it can like how it's going to happen so yeah we just gotta kind of wait and see i'm keeping my fingers crossed that like it you know we're allowed to have maybe there's like a online qualifier or something like maybe they just bring the top 10 or the top 20 like i'm keeping Mm. my fingers crossed that there'll be something fun for us to watch in one way shape or form and like yes i guess this year is always going to have an asterisk next to it like it is what it is but like i'm just hoping there's as a fan of the sport i'm hoping there's something fun that happens that we can watch that progresses a sport for this really weird year and then you know we get back to the season maybe the open is in October, maybe it's pushed back. Like, I don't know what it is, but I hope sanctionals can get their bearings and, and <clears throat> start rolling again in the fall. And then the next season is right. sort of like back to normal. And I really hope they need a sideline reporter. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Yeah. I, as a professional athlete in this sport that kind of makes a living off of that stuff, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that there's some opportunity to be able to do that. Otherwise we've all kind of missed out on, almost a full year of being able to do what we do and showcase our fitness and make a living and yeah all that good stuff so whatever it's gonna be i'll be ready for it well i'm ready for him to get the gyms back open like i read today yeah. that um the the people that have you know god forbid that die from this disease i want it was a high number it was like 89 percent of them had underlying health issues Oh, yeah. Meaning like, meaning that 9% of the people that died had no underlying mm-hmm. health issues. So I've got to believe that healthier people that go to the gym are far more safe to this than those that aren't, obviously. And so getting yeah. gym, I think getting gyms open is a priority. I mean, I, you know, mm-hmm. bluntly, like those of you guys that are gym owners are saving lives, like keeping people in shape, keeping them healthy. I think particularly in CrossFit gyms where we have the ability to, to kind of, you know, sanitize easier than like maybe a big globo gym you know yeah. and run and you, small you classes small yeah, right. I, yeah 
I think it's important yeah. and, you know, but we're just painting it all with a, a wide brush and keeping them all shut. It's just, it's really unfortunate right I now. I know people are just really scared about this resurgence issue, which I totally understand as yeah, well. It's, I understand it's it. It's yeah. scary, but like, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what's <clears> right. We yeah, have like Joanne. a crazy, like safe reopen program plan in place oh. where like we've like already like put tape on the floor so you can have like six people at a time but they're like six <laughs> six feet apart and like every right. station gets a rower of its own and like we move class time so that we can sanitize in between classes like we're yeah. ready even though it's yeah, not going to yeah. happen for a little while whatever it may be mm -hmm. i don't know it it will be interesting joanne read an article to me i don't know if you guys heard about this that there was an island in japan that kind of lifted all restrictions and opened back up and then two weeks later had this huge surge of cases and people yeah. dying and so they yeah. shut back down and they were like we made a mistake yes. we weren't ready to reopen so yeah and that's what's going to happen As, here with the with the first you know spots that are like so yeah. into and i'm gonna get all sorts As, of hate i'm sure but like no i know but i mean like, as eager as everybody is it's yeah it's so hard to tell like i don't know Dude, it's not up to us so I wore a mask into Whole Foods today. Like I'd never thought in a million years I'd be wearing a mask, but you know, it was like, I'm shopping now when I go to the grocery, I shop for three to four weeks at a time. Yeah. So I have this mm -hmm. gigantic right. cart full of food. Of I spent like 300 bucks. I'm the only guy in this house. I might <laughs> add me and Bean. Nice. And um, yeah. anyway, so like I'm walking around and it occurred to me, like I saw a couple not wearing a mask and like, you know how your brain kind of flips. You're like, you kind of get like mad at someone for no good reason. That's what happened yes. to me. Right. Yeah. And it was a, it was okay, a month ago. The rules. Yeah, yes. it, was a, it was a month ago. I was walking around in Whole Foods and it was one of the few people not wearing a mask thinking all these people wearing masks are dumbasses. Hmm. And then today, Man. like I've totally flipped that switch because now I'm worried yeah. about it, you know? Absolutely. We're totally all supposed to relate wear masks to that. Now. Yeah. And yeah. I think we're going to be wearing masks for like the next two years, if I can be honest. Oh, like I, I do. I, not lot, all the time. I get it. But I think I think for a long time coming because of this like weird cultural shift and this phenomenon that we're all going through as humans, right. that like you're gonna see people wearing masks the at paranoia. least at big gatherings for a yeah. while, like at right. concerts or like close quartered movie. They'll or make it cool events. and fashionable, but be wearing Yeah, oh something. yeah, that's definitely yeah. coming down the pipeline. Yeah. yeah like I'm not yeah. excited about it. I just I'm just <laughs> being realistic. I think it's happening. Do you guys think that gyms are gonna be required to have people wear a mask? Because I cannot imagine no. doing CrossFit wearing a No, I think coaches probably. Like if you're yeah. um if you're interacting with a whole lot of people throughout the entire day, right. maybe coaches will be asked to wear them or hmm but it's not realistic to ask people to like exert themselves physically and not be able to breathe. Yeah. It almost seems dangerous. Yeah. I don't think that's going to be a thing, but I do think that, um, you know, like keeping stations apart and having extra time to sanitize the equipment and you can open the bay doors, open the bay doors. I think a lot of gyms are going to do outside things when they can. Yeah. Um, keep it and, aired out. Yeah, exactly. We shall see. Shan't we? Yes. My, how things have changed one year ago. Exactly. Right now we were in Italy. No, that is wild. When you posted that today, I was thinking you were just posting it because we were doing the podcast tonight, but incredibly ironically, or maybe it was fate. That was a year ago. Today. Exactly. A year ago today. I watched you eat dessert yeah. first, but I will always oh, be man. impressed. It was good. What was it? It was like something with fruit and it was you like straight ice cream. It was like ice, ice cream yeah. out of a pineapple. We went to dinner after the oh, Italian pineapple. showdown. Yes. <clears throat> and Noah, who done, you done really well. Did you come in second? Eh, third. Not third. so well. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> sorry. Just sorry. The other podium spot. If no yay deal. first, you're last. <laughs> We had had a, after this tough weekend of competition, we went to dinner and we went to like an authentic Italian pizza spot. And Steph and I were so excited. We were like, we're going to split like four pizzas and we're going to yeah. get, then we're going to get a pasta and then we're going to get like all this dessert and it's going to be great. And as soon as the waiter came around, Noah was like, I will start with the pineapple ice cream and <laughs> <laughs> then I will so have good. three pizzas. <laughs> yeah. We, everybody like, yes. out. That was good. That was, that was good awesome. Stuff. Dude, I, there's nothing I love better trip. than watching games athletes like eat the food that they really love after training. Like it's my favorite thing. Yes. Yeah. Dude, that's no feels... holds barred. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, it's yeah. so weird. Even, even if I do like, I don't know, it doesn't matter. Just a competition in general automatically. I'm like, I earned whatever I want. We did a, 
an online competition with Training Think Tank like two weeks ago. And it wasn't that high volume. It was three events per day for two days. And we finished it. And I was like, I'm exhausted. I'm eating everything under the sun and taking a whole week of rest. And it's such a weird mentality, but it's like this switch gets flipped and you're like, all right, I can finally relax and breathe for a little bit. What's your, what's your go-to reward food? Oh man. Ice cream definitely is in there. Um, anything really burger, fries, pizza. I don't like to get so like gross with it that I feel sick and hung over the next day, but I'll definitely try to indulge enough that I feel like it was worth the sacrifice for how long we did whatever mm-hmm. we did. You basically just described my diet Monday, know, Tuesday, Wednesday. Like, here's my Saturday night. Pizza, like, burgers, fries, and ice cream. Shoot, yes. we got them all. Sounds like an average. There's uh, <laughs> my, my birthday is on Sunday, and there is a pizza place down here in Miami called Old Greg's Pizza. And they have not opened yet, but somehow, man, marketing masters, they've gone super viral with like sampling seating pizzas to people around Miami and have built so much hype that people are like angry that they can't, they aren't the ones that are getting (laughs) these sample pizzas. I was one of them. I I was DMing them like, I better get one of these or I'm going to file a complaint with the city. (laughs) And, uh, I ended up through a friend of a friend being able to get a old Greg pizza this Sunday. I haven't had it yet, but it's, it's coming for the birthday and I'm very excited. That's awesome. It's going to be good. Well-deserved. I'll I'll forward (laughs) you guys the Instagram page. I I had pizza when I was in Miami and I can't remember the name of the place, but this pizza was bigger than my house. Like swear to God, it was so big. Famous for pizza. Like, We don't, there's not a a really go-to spot down here for me with pizza. It was so good. And I I won't forget it because that's, that's the go-to food for the pan checks. And so Scott was competing Uh, and they were all competing down there. And one of my buddies who kind of travels with Scott on these trips messaged me because I put it in my Instagram. He's like, where'd you get that pizza? Scott wants pizza after the competition. (laughs) And it was good, but I'm not kidding. You You don't remember? No, it'll come to me. I'm not kidding though. This pizza was literally like the size of the table. Huge. I've never seen a pizza nice. that big and it was great. Huh. It was so good. I'm going to have to find that out. Yeah. I'll, post-event meals for you guys are always, like, I, I do love watching you because you guys all eat like fat kids. It's amazing. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> only, only on those days. Most of the other times we're pretty disciplined. True. Wow. I think, I don't know. Some people joke about eating ice cream all the time. Like Hepner has been posting about Ben and Jerry's. Chandler told me yesterday that he's been eating ice cream every night. And I'm like, I don't know if I believe you guys. Like, are you being playful and facetious or are you actually eating ice cream every night and you still have a 12 pack? I don't know. They're trying to get in your head. <laughs> maybe, maybe. They want me to start eating ice cream and mm-hmm. just crumble. I, just I mean, get all I do fat and sassy. I have my fair share. Like, I would say once or twice a week I'm munching on some ice cream, but it's not every day. Oh, I think you got to live your life some, but I mean, you guys have a, totally. a different, um, you know, different training method than the rest of us. I watch the twins walk around all the time eating chicken and rice. Like they're literally just yeah. walking around the gym with a big bowl of rice and chicken on top and, you know, some sort of vegetable. And, and that seems to be their life. But then when they're done competing, they do the exact same thing. They go get a <laughs> monster pizza yep. and just crush it. Absolutely yeah. crush it. Are you talking about the Panchik twins? Yeah. Do you go to their gym? Yep. Yeah. I've been training oh, with them. Cool. Yeah, I've I've nice. known Scott for years, and then uh, when uh, Spencer and Saxon open their own gym, it's closer to my house, and so I've been training there about a year awesome. and a half now. Yeah, they're great Cliff coaches. Side. Yeah, it's a great. I don't gym. know if this is public knowledge. Maybe I'll get in trouble for sharing it, but my manager is also recently become Saxon's manager. So oh, yeah, yeah. Saxon and I have gotten to interact a little bit more, and he seems like a really cool kid. He's yeah, well, awesome. I, I ran into your manager at Wadapalooza. He was uh, walking Bijan. around with yeah, Bijan. He was walking around nice. with um, with Allison and um, what, oh, what's that? Scuds, Allison Scuds. Yeah. And so Allison follows me, and she and I have a 
you know, we message occasionally because we both have cats. And so she literally nice. turns to Bijan and she's like, oh, this is John. He's a cat lady. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, that's a great <laughs> intro. I'm like, that's how you're going to introduce me as a cat lady? I'm mad, but it's true. I yeah. mean, yeah. I mean, I'm mad, you ain't but wrong. yeah. You yeah. Ain't wrong. <laughs> is Mr. Bean your only cat or is it just Bean? No, it's just Bean. Yeah. No, just he's, bean. He's, 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 you know, trust me. We're not gonna, there's a rule about cats for single dudes. Like, it's okay to have one. <laughs> mm-hmm. If you have two and then you get in a relationship with lady. Yeah, if you get if you have two and then you get in a relationship with someone and have a cat, you're absolutely a cat lady. Oh, absolutely. And there's no having that. And then there's a lot of girls out there that already have two cats. So that, you know, you might get stuck with three anyway at some point. Like it's just it's a real touchy yeah. subject. Like it's fine, rough having fine, one. Fine. Yeah, he's uh he's in my lap right now. Cats are are far different than dogs like i like i i've been following your dog as long as i've been following you for whatever oh, that's same. Right. I appreciate that yeah and, and uh, is I, awesome i follow all the crossfit dogs winston you know uh nice. annie and i forget the, did the other saxon one. also just get a little golden retriever puppy he, he did as sweet as sweet as can be so cute huh yeah and dogs are the is best a boy or a girl a uh, girl little girl awesome and you know they give you all this unconditional love or cats like they'll they love you, but it's, it's on it is absolutely on their terms. They're like a human yeah. that way. Like and that's yeah. that's what I like. I try to explain to people. It's like people go, well, I hate cats because you know they're not very nice. I'm like, no, <laughs> cats are like people. Like, do you hate people? Like people don't just give you unconditional love. <laughs> They've got to know true. you. Cats are like that. Yeah. Like they they want to be petted, but sometimes they just want you to look at them. Right. You know. Yeah. But also sometimes they just want to put their butthole on you. Sometimes and that's why I'm not into it. Yeah, sometimes yeah. they just want to put their butthole on the camera when I'm on a podcast. Like too. Too. It's true. Yeah. I'm I'm equally not into those people. Yes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Good call. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh dogs God. over cats. That's just my vote. Yeah, you, you have a couple great. of dogs, don't you, Nikki? Yeah, I've got two Bernese Mountain dogs. Big. Yeah, they're mm-hmm. awesome. Oh I love my those God, dogs. They're the best. Well, they they probably wouldn't do well in Florida, right? Because of the heat. No, and it's funny, like, every winter rolls around in New England, and I'm like, why the fuck are we still here? Like, ugh, <laughs> snow, ugh, it's yeah. always cold, ugh. And, um, you know, I try to convince my husband, because our families are here, so we're never leaving New England. And, right. But I'm always like, ah, you know, like, we could totally, like, live somewhere where it's, like, permanent weather. And his answer to me always, constantly, is like, well, the, the dogs, dogs couldn't do it. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> you're right, we're stuck. <laughs> we're yeah, staying, no big deal, dogs. no big deal. Yeah, and I'll, the I will live they're my life the for them. Yes, 100%. Sure. The vet the other day told me that Griff is the biggest seven-month-old burner that she's ever seen. Nice. Help me. <laughs> Did he get a plaque or she? <laughs> no, he didn't know, but he, she oh. did keep saying that his legs were like tree trunks. He weighs 90 pounds, you guys. That's, That's awesome. Oh, Savage. I'm scared. He's almost on Max's level. Max is triple digits, hundo. Oh, he is. Oh, I'm relocating. It was getting dark outside. Check this out. Joanne set up a tower garden today, and we've got, I think it's 24 different kind of vegetables growing. Oh, how neat. Wow. Yeah, that'd be cool. And there's Max, actually, speaking of the devil. Max, you want to come hang out? (gasps) Come here, He loves his daddy. I love him. Everybody loves Max. I love dogs. Oh, my God. He's a good boy. I mean, you guys are cool, but I love dogs. Yeah, me too. I like dogs more than people I think. Hey, come here. Come here. Get up. Oh, good boy. Oh, my goodness. He's a big golden, Nella, right? Like, he's he's big for a golden. Yeah. He's above average. I would say an average golden is probably about 70 pounds, and he's 100. Yeah. But he's nice. He's a... He's like thin and, and muscular, hundred, not a not a yeah, chunky hundred. I know. Okay? So Ollie's like ninety pounds, but I think that he's he's kind of fat right now. Well, I think chunkster. he should be like he should be like eighty pounds. <laughs> he's thick. Ooh, yeah, his little brother is about to be like twice as big as him. Nope. <laughs> That's awesome. Two big old doggies. Yeah, it's Uh-oh. been fun. Well, what else do you guys want to talk about? I feel like we've taken up a decent amount of your evening. All good. I, I've enjoyed it. I got nothing much else going on. I think we just ordered some tacos, Taco Wednesday. I think we missed it by a day, but you didn't puke. That's you a plus. didn't throw up. That's true. 
We got, made it all the way through. Yeah. I feel much better. But I just stood up out of the chair and I was like, okay, everything's very more, much more tight than when I first sat down. Dude, that's, that has been me every stuff. day. Like I've been training so much harder solo than I, than yeah. I do at the gym. And so like every day, like I keep standing up and like, I'll get lightheaded or by, I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> what, what happened to my hammies? Like. You know, yeah. What was that? And then I'll remember what I did the day before, you know. I'm gonna have it to like call you every day to check in on you and make sure you haven't like passed out yourself in your home chair. <laughs> no, I'm okay. <laughs> Good call. It's interesting to hear from a lot, well not a lot, but uh probably fifty percent of the people that I've spoken to about this whole situation, just checking up on them, including myself, have said they're almost busier now being at home than they were before, which I I get it. Like there if if you are again taking advantage of the situation is the wrong word but capitalizing is maybe a better word if you're capitalizing on everybody being home and putting out more content and it depends on what you do but i think there's a lot more to be done and you can use all those extra hours that you have to be productive and do stuff Mm -hmm. i I think people struggle i I have a post coming up tomorrow about this um, because i think there's a lot of people struggling with how do they maintain intensity without being under the watchful eye of their coach or without having their friends around them. And I, mm. I keep telling myself like right now, like when we come out of this and I go back to the gym, I want to be proud of what I walk in with. I don't mm-hmm. want my coaches look at me and go, did you that's sit cool. on your ass for eight weeks? Like <laughs> that's how I motivate myself. And, and, yeah. and, and I go into all the workouts thinking I don't have to destroy this workout. <laughs> Anything that I do is better than the nothing that I want to do. Yeah. And as long as you do too. that and you keep moving, I'll, I'll have workouts. It'll be super. I did one yesterday. It was a assault bike and burpees and it was intense as hell. And I hated it. And then I had one today that, you know, it was, you know, it was all body weight and it took about an hour, but it wasn't hard at all. It wasn't intense. It was just long, you know, it's but you like, felt good that you did something and got yeah. moving. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I got it done, you know? And yeah. And I, I think if people would just look at it like that and just think, man, if I just do something, it's better than nothing. And they'll find that over time, they'll still start figuring out how to get to that intensity that you need to get to, to, to do what we do as CrossFitters. But. Yeah. I think for everybody that's in quarantine, having a hard time getting moving, it's the initial spark, like the, uh, the catalyst to get moving. Cause once you do, I, at least for myself, once I start moving, then it's really easy. I build momentum and I'm like, all right, I'll do another workout and I'll do another workout. Mm-hmm. But before I start, I'm like, I don't want to do any workouts. This is really <laughs> tough. So I, I don't know if you can find whether it's a friend that holds you accountable. Like, hey, at 11 every day, we're going to Zoom each other or go live or do this workout together. Something to just start, I think, is probably the biggest holdup. And then once you get going, you're good to go. Yeah. Well, Nikki and I are going to do some assault bike wads together on Instagram Live. You guys, the bike wait. is here. It is in the wait. basement. That's good and bad news. I know. That's exactly what I said. Tracy sent me a, a workout <laughs> today. She was like, your first one should be 10 calories on the bike, 10 thrusters, 10 rounds. Ooh. And I was like, Ooh, no. Yeah. no. Beach. That's a lot. Okay. Sounds t- great. I, I yeah. just threw one in yesterday, like in between two wads. I did a strength wad and then I was going to do the burpees and assault bike for 21, 15, nine. That was it. It's a five yeah. minute workout. If, if you're not that even, sounds gross. if you're not even pushing hard, it's only five minutes, you know? And, and, and then I had a second workout after that. So I'm like, all right, this, I knew it would be short. I'm like, this will be short. I'll do it. And then I'll give myself three minutes rest and I'll do this last workout. Well, I do the 21, 15, nine. And then it took me like 10 to 15 minutes to recover. I'm like, I don't, under, I don't understand <laughs> yeah. that. How what is this, 49 calories on an assault bike will just wreck you for 10 to 15 minutes. Like it's, mm-hmm. yeah, it's really it's something, imp- something about it. You and the assault bikes have a very special relationship. You post about oh. them quite often. That's because the, the pan checks have trained me to hate that thing. Like, yeah, the very <laughs> first time they put me on one first time. I thought I was going to be the shit, man. It was like, it was right in my wheelhouse. It was uh, three rounds. I want to say it was uh, 20 calories on the assault bike. And then you'd go in and you'd do uh, 10 power cleans and they were light power cleans. So I get on the thing. I'm like, all right, I'm going to, I got this. I'm Mm going to kill the bike and I'm going to go over and get to these cleans and show these guys how fit I am for my first day at mentality. 
So I, and awesome. I de- so I destroy the first 20 calories. I mean, I, I think I rattle them off in like, I don't know, 30 seconds, maybe like just blew yeah. through them, walk over all confident to the bar. And I literally miss the first power. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I what's happening no, I, to my body. I yeah. Don't understand. And Scott was literally, I watched him look at me and start laughing because he saw it yeah. coming, you know? And I'm like, yeah. I couldn't believe I missed the first lift. It was such a lightweight, you know? And, that's when I learned like that bike is, is Satan. That's where it all began. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So terrible. It's all downhill from there. Yep. Yeah. I had my fair share of it this evening. So well, hopefully I get a break from it tomorrow. All right. Well, we'll let you go eat tacos. We, we appreciate you being on. It's been a lot of fun. And thank uh, you guys. I appreciate it. I enjoyed it as well. Yeah. Happy birthday coming yes. up. Hey, thank you so much. I'm getting old. 29. Wow. Uh, Dude, the shoes I'm wearing are 29. So <laughs> good. Wow. I feel cool. really old now. All right. Well, thank you, Noah, for making me feel old. My I appreciate pleasure. it. And uh, <laughs> happy birthday, Nikki. Great to see you again, as always. Likewise. I'm sure I'll Probably talk see to each you. other tomorrow, right? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. I don't even know what's on the calendar anymore. So anyway, all right. We all right, appreciate guys, it. I'll, I'll bring Max back on real quick to say goodbye. Max. Yes. Say goodbye to everybody at home. Bye, Max. Love you guys. Bye. Oh, Bye. Look, look at that face. I love him so much. He is the best. Bye, guys. Have a great night. See you later. All right. Thanks, Noah. And for everyone listening, we appreciate you guys being on, and we will talk to you all soon.